Hey guys, Eric from Ferris Engineering here, and I wanted to take a uh, moment on today's blog, blog, to discuss research and development costs, which I think often goes overlooked or unnoticed in the marketplace. Um, some companies actually don't do too much R&D. We do a ton of R&D, so we actually do know quite a bit about this. And today I wanted to specifically go over the R&D on our fuel starvation door as it sees quite a bit of skepticism as why it costs so much and and ultimately I understand why it's, it's a small piece it shouldn't be that difficult to, to, to machine but when your customer base is a few hundred people that track their car we have to recoup our R&D costs which were quite significant for this small part in in that few hundred parts so so I wanted to go over basically our costs on developing this part and hopefully open your eyes to possibly what's going on behind the scenes that people don't see so often uh, when a new product is developed and, and released. And, and this is not just for our company, this is for other companies as well. Um, basically, I just want to inform you guys that there is another side to R&D that, that maybe many don't actually think about or consider. Starting at the beginning, uh, I'm going to take you back to before this product existed. There is an issue with the FRSBRZ in that the car can suffer from fuel starvation even with almost a full tank of gas on high G left hand turns. And this is basically caused by this fuel basket uh, being drained from fuel because of the forces that it is seen due to uh, one to one and a half G uh, acceleration as you take a left hand turn. We aren't the first company that actually attempted to fix this issue. There were many other companies that actually attempted to fix it, and while they did come up with some solutions, nothing were, was as inexpensive as our solution is now, and so most of them required an external surge tank, which is generally very expensive, and also not something that we were really interested in doing because that brings fuel outside of the gas tank into the uh, passenger compartment, and to us it's a little unsafe. Granted, a lot of people put them in the trunk, but again, you're losing trunk space. It doesn't create the best solution for, say, a daily driver that just wants to go out on the track and go around the track for more than one session without hitting fuel starvation. So that was our goal. Before we could even start development of the product, we actually have to gather all the pieces of the puzzle. So we went out and we sourced an OEM gas tank, an OEM fuel basket, and a WRX fuel basket to see if it would actually fit the WRX as well. This was about $60, I believe this was $60 to $100, and then this was $300 from a local. Um, you could argue that we could go out and find better prices, sure, but at some point, time is money, and these were available at the time, so we picked them up and purchased them. That's when the project officially started. We hadn't really even looked into it. Um, beyond purchasing these parts. So basically that means that we're about $460 in cost right off the bat in looking into this solution to this problem. Now let's talk about the weekly costs of doing business for Veris Engineering. This is gonna range wide, widely per business, but I can give you rough estimates of what our business costs are. So. Roughly with rent, utilities, and, and that type of expenses, we're at $625 per week. For our CAD software, we're at $500 per week. And finally, for the, the wages, for the person that worked on this product, me, uh, we're gonna say my wage is $36,000 a year. That's $690 a week. That's a very modest wage for an engineer. Um, I really do not pay myself very much. But, regardless, that is where we're at per week. So per week, that ultimately means we're at about $1,800 in cost that automatically goes out every week of our business. That has to be paid for us to stay in business. That doesn't include software for CFD and FEA. That doesn't include insurance. That doesn't include health insurance. Um, we have other expenses, but I'm leaving those out. I'm basically doing a bare bones, what it would take for someone to replicate what we did 
um, and, and produce it. So that's CAD software, that is overhead, which is our, our rent and utilities, and that is uh, a salary of $36,000 a year. So that is the minimum of what you would need to produce a part like this. So regardless of if you're gonna believe this next statement or not, it honestly took us, me, three weeks to come up with a solution for this problem. Now, why did it take me three weeks? It looks so simple now. This, this little door should have just easily, you should have seen it right away. Yes, you can argue that, but the other companies before us didn't see this solution. I didn't see the solution for two and a half weeks until I stared at it and I worked through multiple other iterations until I saw that, that little, those two little snaps that, that looked like, like, hey, look, a door. Looks like it was actually meant to go there. And for some reason, Subaru and Toyota left it off. So it, it did indeed take me three weeks. So initially, what we had started with was a universal check valve that was gonna fit on this inlet into the basket. And I had come up with uh, probably a couple dozen different solutions that we could possibly manufacture with a check valve that would basically perform the same function as this flapper door does, but, but um, basically get assembled onto this exterior part with also allowing the siphon tube to still function. And that's where about two and a half weeks of time was spent. We printed multiple uh, test samples, we installed it, uninstalled it, attempted to ensure that the siphon tube would work. There was a lot of R&D going into the solution that never even saw light of day. Um, so that's where three weeks came from. After spotting that non-existent fuel door location, we quickly printed up a prototype and sent it out to Neil at the razor line who said he could replicate the issue without a problem and installed it, tested it, and at that point, finally, we have a viable product that we could actually uh, manufacture. So if we basically take those three weeks and the cost of these materials, then the printing, and the printing material and the printing cost, uh, we're basically looking at about $6,000 in R&D and we most certainly spent every bit of that developing this tiny little product. Um, it's, it's hard to believe, I'm sure, but it's, that's the fact. That $6,000 is before we even produce a single item as well. Just keep that in mind. In conclusion, whether you believe us or not, as far as if we're exaggerating, I hope you have opened your mind to possibly seeing that there are more than just the base product cost that we actually have to uh, account for and, and basically ensure that we actually cover our costs so that we can stay in business and produce another product that you may or may not use. Um, we know we have uh, quite a few people that have commented and said this fuel starvation door, while expensive, has totally saved me from, from purchasing a thousand dollar surge tank setup. Or we've received um, emails that say, thank you, uh, we can actually stay out on track more than two laps. This is amazing. It's not, a, it's not a perfect solution, it's not a surge tank solution, but it does improve fuel starvation for those guys that are seeing it in high, left, high G left hand turns. So to stay in business, we have to account for that $6,000 in R&D costs and ensure that we can actually recoup at least some of that uh, in the few hundred units that we actually possibly sell. Um, again, I just hope you actually open your mind and see that wow, there, there might be something else to this story other than this small little part is, is all that our cost is. And it's not. It's a lot more than that. And then we actually have to go out and market it, which also costs money and time. Um, granted, this, has, this part has, has marketed itself because it does actually fix an issue. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, vlog, and um, I, I think we'll actually go over some more um, kind of misconceptions or questions or frequently asked questions on manufacturing, R&D, that type of stuff, because we're so heavily ingrained in that every day um, on what we do here at Veris Engineering. Thanks for your time, and uh, please subscribe, like us, all that stuff. Thanks.